Hi everyone, thanks for watching, I'm Simon from Homesite and today we're going to be taking our Sonoff RF bridge which we've already flashed with Tasmota and we're going to be getting it working with Home Assistant and MQTT broker Mosquito. Now if you haven't flashed it, you want to check out this video here because that'll take you through it. Let's go! So I'll stick some times up on the screen now, just in case you wanted to jump to a particular part of the video. But what we're going to do now is we've taken, we've got our Sonoff RF bridge, we've already flashed it with Tasmota. So what we're going to do is we're going to log on to it first of all using a Wi-Fi enabled computer. That could be a laptop, a phone, a desktop PC with a wireless adapter. And then we're going to set it up. We're going to get it pointing to our MQTT broker, which we're going to set up as well, called Mosquito. I'm going to, and then we're going to get it configured. And we're going to set up a doorbell, we're going to set up a, a door sensor, and we'll set up a PIR sensor as well, just to give you a different flavour of the different types of things that we can get working on it. So first of all, let's get our web browser open, let's get our Sonoff RF bridge plugged in, and let's get connected. So looking at the Sonoff device itself, you're looking for that blue LED to be flashing away. Now that either means it's got Wi-Fi activity, i.e. it's connected to a wireless network, or it's broadcasting its own SSID, its own wireless name. So if we go to our wireless networks, you should find one called Tasmota, followed by some letters and numbers. Now that's the idea of your device. If you click on that and hit connect, hopefully it should connect you to what they call an interstitial page. However, in Windows it often doesn't work, so we're going to use a mobile phone. Or for you guys in the States, a cell phone. Now, I'm a bit of an Apple fanboy, so I'm going to be doing it on an iPhone today. So, first of all, we need to disconnect from our normal wireless network and connect to the one called Tasmota. Now, this should pop up with the interstitial page, hopefully. There we go. Here's our interstitial page. So, we need to put in our app or AP1 SSID. Now, you can put multiple SSIDs. I'm just going to do the one. And mine is called HA underscore network. Put in the wireless password. And I'm going to give it a host name. I'm going to call mine, nice original name, RF Bridge. There we go. And hit save. So it'll now reboot and hopefully it will connect you to the it will connect directly to the wireless network. There you go, I've connected automatically back to Skynet, my normal wireless. Now the next bit could be a little bit tricky if you're not too familiar with networking. Now you're gonna to need to log onto your router to find out the IP address that it's given out. Now there's something called a DHCP server within your router generally, which gives out all the IP addresses to your network. And you need to find out the IP address of the RF bridge so that you can now log on to it and configure it. I really wish Tasmota would implement an ability to put a static IP address onto the device during that interstitial or that initial setup page. I think that'd be a really, really good feature. Now, I've already found the IP address, so I'm gonna jump straight to the next bit where I'm going to log on to the RF bridge using Google Chrome and start to set it up. Now it's probably a good time to mention that I'm going to be doing a network video tutorial very, very soon. Now if you hit subscribe, then that will tell you when it comes out. So I've already got the IP address for my RF bridge, so there it is. Now we're, we're on the Tasmota device, we're on the RF bridge now. So first thing you'll notice it says off at the top. Now this is a Sonoff RF bridge, right? Why does it say off? And if we hit toggle, it says on. If you try that, what you'll see is that the blue LED turns off and on. Not that useful. So we need to set it up as the right type of device. So we go to configuration, we go to configure module, and then we choose the right device. If we scroll down here, you'll find Sonoff bridge. Don't be confused by Sonoff RF, because that's not the one. It's a Sonoff bridge. We've done that, we'll hit save. Now it reboots really, really fast. So we can hit menu menu almost instantly. And there we go. Now what you can see is we've got buttons one through 16 and we can, that can send out RF signals. 
or we can configure it to when we receive, we can then forward that onto Home Assistant using MQTT. So this next bit assumes that you've already got an MQTT broker set up. If you haven't, check out my channel and you'll find one for setting up Mosquito on Home Assistant. So we're going to jump straight in and go to configuration and configure MQTT. We're going to put in our host, now my host. This is the address of your MQTT broker, probably your Home Assistant. Mine is this. I'm going to leave the port by default. The client, I'm going to put a friendly name in there of RF Bridge. Although it doesn't really matter. The user now needs to be the ability to authenticate into your home assistant or your MQTT broker. Now mine is MQTT underscore user and the password is MQTT underscore pass. Now that's not the one I use on my real system, but that's just one we use for this. Now the topic, you could leave that by default and this will mean that anything that it, the RF bridge sends out will be prefixed with this as the topic. Now I'm going to change this to RF hyphen bridge just to make life nice and simple. So this is now going to be fine, so that we'll get, we can leave that one alone, the full topic, because that will refer to this as well as the prefix. So I'm going to press save, and as always it will reboot in a couple of seconds. Press main menu, and we're back. Now, the next thing we want to check is that we are able to receive RF signals. So if we click into console, you'll see a console. Now if we take a PIR, we can see that that's popped up. Or we could take a door contact, open, and close. Fantastic. So we know that we are receiving signals into our RF bridge. Now that should now be sending it onto our MQTT broker and incidentally received into Home Assistant. Now we just need to set Home Assistant up to know what to do with those signals. So before we come out of the console screen, we want to take note of a couple of things. First of all, this bit here, this is telling you the topic, the MQTT topic. Now, for a bit more information on MQTT topics and how they work, view my other video on, on setting up Mosquito, and I'll take you through that. Now, the other bit of in crucial information is this bit here, just after the word data. Now, if I activate the PIR, it comes up with this code here. Now, that's the code, the unique code that you're looking for when you're setting these up in Home Assistant. And equally, so I'm going to take note of that, I'm equally going to do the same for an open and a close event for my door sensor. So I can see that's CF100A and CF100E for close. So now we're going to jump straight back into Home Assistant. The next thing we need to do is jump into our file editor. Now I'm assuming you've got the file editor add-on installed, if not, you can do it, of course, by browsing to your Home Assistant device and editing your configuration.yaml file. So in File Editor, we click on this Open button, we click on configuration.yaml. Now we can start editing away. Now I have prepared my code already. So first thing you need to do, let's talk through this, binary sensor colon, now that's noticed it's really important that these are all spaced or indented the right amount, so binary sensor is at the first level. Now you can put a comment in here, you can put a comment of your door with a hash first, then we have space, space, hyphen, space, and then the following bit. So we've got the platform as MQTT, because that's where it's coming in from, MQTT. The name, this, I put your door, but it can be anything you like. Now you'll notice we've got the, that telly hyphen RF bridge. Now that was the bit we got from the console earlier on. Now this is the, the topic it's called. Now the value.template, this is that, that data bit that we're getting out, so it's coming from RF received. Um, we're stripping out from J, in a language called JSON or a programming language called JSON. Um, and it's data, that's the bit that we want. And there's that payload on and payload off. Now payload off is when it's open and payload on is when it's closed. Now I've put device class as door and QoS of one. So I am going to go ahead and save that. Now you're looking at for a green tick up here. Now if I did something daft, come up with a 
red exclamation mark like that. See, I've put a single quote here and it doesn't like that. That's not correct with the YAML configuration. So if we take that back out, it checks it and gives it a green tick. So press save. We come down to our configuration, into server controls, and this check configuration. We're gonna hit that. If you haven't got that check configuration button, head down to your user profile and turn on advanced mode, and that will allow you to do that. Now, once we've got configuration valid, that's gonna say that when we reboot in a second or restart, it means that it's gonna boot back up, or it should boot back up. And if it doesn't, it's not because of the configuration YAML or the changes we've just made. So now we sit and wait, and while we're doing that, why don't you like this video? Why don't you subscribe to my channel and make sure you don't miss out on any good ones. So our home assistant's rebooted, now it's just time to check to see if it works. Now if you haven't already modified your Lovelace and it's still adding all the devices, we should be able to browse straight to it and find this added it automatically. So you can see the one that we added, your door. So if I pull that apart, the icon's changed and shows the doors open and closed. It's shut the door, fantastic. We can also check that in developer tools. If we find binary sensor dot your door is currently off again. Brilliant, it's changed and back. So we know that off is closed and on is open. So now that we've got our Sonoff RF bridge set up, it's sending information to Home Assistant and that's great. Now if we wanted to add a new device, like we're going to add a PIR in a second, now we need to log on to our RF bridge. Now you might not know what the IP address of that is, because it might change, because you can't set a static IP address on it. So you could set a DHCP reservation through your router or whatever it is that gives out IP addresses on your network, check out my network tutorial to see how that works. or we could not really worry about it and just let it float around in the DHCP pool, so in the, in the range of addresses that it could get given out, because it knows where to send the information, and that's the important thing. But we still need to make sure we can get that data. So I'm going to show you how to do that in Node-RED. Now, for those of you who aren't familiar with Node-RED, it's a programming tool which is really, really simple. It's graphical. You can drag the nodes onto the canvas and wire them up just by clicking and dragging. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to look for so this is our flow. The first thing we're going to do is look for MQTT. And I use this little search box at the top because it saves scrolling up and down. We're going to drag MQTT in. Now the first thing we need to do is set up an MQTT broker. And that's only on the first time that you use MQTT with this. So if I click on the little pencil, I'm going to call this localhost. Now localhost assumes that you're running, MQ, you're running Node Red on the same instance that you're logged on to through Home Assistant. So we put in localhost in there, we put in our MQTT user and MQTT underscore pass, and we press add. Now, for the topic, we know what that is because that's in here. But it's also in our configuration file if you wanted to look there. So I'm going to give this a friendly name, MQTT in from RF Bridge. Press done. I'm also going to add another node called a debug node. And I'm going to wire them up just by dragging between those two little points. And I'm going to press deploy and confirm. So next I'm going to click on the little debug up here. I'm going to change this to just my current flow. Now this is going to output everything from this payload to this little window here. So if I grab my switch, my, my read sensor, pull it open and closed, you can see data has come up in exactly the same way. So it means we haven't had to leave our home assistant instance. We can forget about our RF bridge and it'll carry on sending that data in. So if I now get my PIR, It'll pop up as well. So I can see that that is my code for my PIR. I'm going to copy that and I'm going to head back to my file editor. I'm just going to put a little comment here and I'm going to call this PIR and for now I'm just going to paste that code in there. I'm now going to copy all of this bit here 
and paste it underneath, making sure that that indentation is exactly the same. So the two little red hyphens are in the same place and the platform and all of that is all in the same place, which is great. So I'm going to call this PIR1. You can call it whatever you like. Now, the difference is that a PIR will tell you when there's motion, but it won't tell you when there's not motion. Unlike my door sensor, which will tell you open and closed, the PIR is only going to tell you motion. So what we're going to do with payload off. So first of all, I'm going to paste this bit here that we took from our node red, that bit of data. I'm going to paste that into payload on. I'm going to paste the same thing into payload off. And I'm going to put underscore off at the end. Now it has to have a payload off because you need to know when, it's when there's no motion. But how do we set that? Because the PIR is not going to tell us. So what we do is we put in something called an off delay. So that is going to say after five seconds, it's going to go from on to off. Now I did this with all sorts of automations in Node Red to start with. And then I realized that the clever people at Home Assistant had already thought about that. So you can just put off delay colon and the number of seconds you want it to turn off after. So the last thing we're going to do with this is change it from a door. Now we can't put PIR because that isn't one of the device classes. Now you can Google the device classes if you want to look them up. But I'm going to use motion. After I've done that, I'm going to press save. The same as before, I'm going to go into configuration, server controls, check configuration, and assuming that's valid, we're good to restart. Now just a word of warning about RF devices. Not all RF devices are created equally. Now what I'm talking about is these door sensors that I've been using on this one. These ones are great, but I don't actually know who make them or, or what they're called. I got a bit lucky and found them on eBay. Now not all door sensors, like this one, have an open and a close. Now I think it's really important to understand when the door's been opened, but also when it's been closed, or the current state. Now these ones in fact have the not just the open and close, but also a little tamper switch on the back. And so it'll tell you if someone's taken the back or if it's fallen off. These ones here don't have a tamper switch. They'll tell you when it's open, but not when it's closed. They're a bit bigger and chunkier. The range is about the same as the other one. Now this one here is made by Sonoff. This is a Sonoff device. So you just need to be careful about what ones you're buying. And sometimes it might be trial and error, but RF devices are generally very, very cheap anyway. Now I've gone ahead and added my tamper. I've also added a doorbell in as well. And now I'm going to show you those in the overview, the Lovelace. So we're back at our overview screen. I can open my door and we'll see the icon changes. I can take the back off and we should see the ta your door tamper icon change. There we go. I can wave at my PIR and the icon changes to a little guy moving. I can't reach my doorbell from here, but I'll show you that one works as well. So I hope you're still with me. I hope you followed. I hope you've managed to get your Sonoff RF bridge flash with Tasmota and set up in Home Assistant, sending that information in via MQTT into Mosquito. I hope you've liked the page and subscribed to watch out for new ones. I've been Simon from Homesite. Thank you very much, and I'll see you next time.